What's going on guys? Today we're going to be working on the bike. And if you haven't seen the first video in this series, go check that out. It might explain a little bit more about what we're doing here. But before I get into that, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody that supported the Project Alpha Kickstarter. Uh, we're totally blown away with the support and we're super excited to start working on the knives and getting them sent out. We're going to do a whole video series about it and the production and all the logistics involved and everything. So stick around for that. I'm excited to share it. We got some pretty big surprises coming. But the last part of this puzzle finally showed up and no, it's not the cat. It's a carbon fiber frame. That's right. Uh, we ordered a carbon fiber frame from AliExpress. It took, I don't know, three or four months to show up here from China. Now there's a lot of controversy about carbon frames uh, in general and especially ones that come from China. Um, and we'll get into the details about that, but so far I'm pretty impressed with this frame. Uh, the more controversial part is going to be what we're going to do to it. I'm going to have to cut this frame apart to be able to use the belt drive. I haven't seen anybody do this on YouTube so far, really anywhere, and maybe there's a reason for that and maybe I'll figure it out. But in the meantime, the plan going forward is to cut this frame right down here. Let me show you. All right, this carbon track frame came with these little metal inserts. This is where the rear wheel slides on, and these inserts are really only designed to protect the carbon from abrasion. They don't really serve any structural improvement to the frame. But I'm gonna use this space to create a bracket that is gonna tie this whole piece back together after I make a cut along here. Uh, I'm gonna be using titanium, uh, eighth inch on both sides. I'm gonna be using the existing holes here to, uh, to tie those two pieces together. And I'm also gonna close this end up so that the frame can't spread apart under the pressure. Uh, getting the wheel on and off with this closed up is gonna be a little tricky, but I'm hoping I can just kinda of slide it in and turn it sideways. The hardest part about this, other than maybe having the courage to cut a brand new carbon fiber frame in half, is making this titanium piece. All right, full disclosure, I have little to no experience machining titanium. But here's what I do know. You need a fairly rigid machine. You need a spindle with very little run out. You need some pretty specialized end mills, and you definitely need flood coolant. We have none of these things. So uh, let's just jump in and see how it goes. But before we jump into it, here's the part we're working with. It's made out of eighth inch grade five titanium, which means it's an alloy and not pure titanium. I'm not even sure if this makes it easier or harder to machine, but we have a pretty basic strategy. I'm gonna do what I would normally do with a piece of aluminum, just a whole lot slower. Don't know if that's the right thing to do here or not, but we're gonna find out. A little bit of a challenge is work holding. So we're gonna be drilling these holes first and using them to work hold the rest of it while we do the perimeter. And in case you're wondering if this thing was gonna be strong enough to hold me up, well, I have no idea. But I did do some finite analysis on this thing, and what you're seeing here basically equates to a 3,000 pound impact force on the bike tire, uh, which I don't think it's ever gonna see. And you're only getting about two or three thou of flex on that piece of steel. So I think we're good. Pretty basic, let's see how it goes. Link in the description. And yeah, I'm sure there's a ton of people with experience with titanium that are probably laughing their butts off at me right now but I don't mind experimenting and ruining a few drill bits in the process. Honestly, at this point, I got kind of stuck. Uh, I, I tried five or six different ways of doing it. I went slower, went faster, higher feed rates, slower feed rates, different spindle speeds. Pretty much the end result is it would just fry the drill bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is because I'm not using flood coolant and using mist instead. But if you guys know of something else I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments. But for now, and in the interest of getting this video done, I'm gonna make this out of steel. Uh, I've got some A2 steel sitting around. It's unhardened uh, and should be fairly easy to machine. So let's do that instead.
<laughs> All right, this thing is turning out kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm actually really pleased with it so far. There's still a fair bit to do. As much as I like the all black frame, I'm gonna paint it. I've got sort of a livery in mind, so that we're gonna tackle in the next episode. In fact, the final episode of the bike build. I know, a three-part episode, crazy. <laughs> But so far, I am super thrilled. It's hard to express on camera just how light this bike is. We'll wait for the final assembly to do a weigh-in, but it's, it's around 12 pounds. So it's, uh, it's, it's light. <laughs> the back bracket is working great. I have put a few miles on it with that uh, and no flex in the frame at all, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm sure I'll get more comments about the unsafe practices of this bike, including the no brakes. But to be honest, I have been riding fixed gear bikes with no brakes for, I don't know, 15, 20 years now. Uh, if I were riding in city streets, uh, like in New York or something, I would probably agree with you. But in these suburban areas in central Florida, not really worried about it. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, if you guys want one of these awesome death metal unicorn t-shirts, uh, go check out the Redbubble page we have linked below. Uh, if you guys don't know anything about Redbubble, uh, they're kind of a crazy site. Uh, I like them a lot. You literally just upload a piece of artwork and they'll print it on anything. So you can get the Death Metal Unicorn on coffee mugs or t-shirts or whatever you want. So go check out the link and um, maybe pick one up. And thanks again for supporting the Alpha Project. Uh, if you guys don't know anything about it, check out the uh, link below for the previous video uh, and maybe go buy one. All right, see you guys.